Hi, my name is Zachary New, and I'm a partner here at Joseph & Hall. I wanted to talk to you today a bit about administrative processing, and more specifically, a form that consults issue called the DS-5535. If you're an individual applying for a visa, you almost always must appear for an in-person interview at a U.S. consulate. And the law requires that at the end of your interview, the consular officer either approve or de deny your visa. That said, there are times that the consular officer simply can't make a decision at, on your case at the end of your interview. And as a result, your case gets placed in this processing black hole known as administrative processing. Ostensibly, this is to allow for additional time for uh, additional documents to be submitted or to perform additional security checks on you before a final determination is made. Normally, this is more of an annoyance than anything and doesn't take all that much time to resolve, but there are outliers that sometimes require a lawsuit to get your case moving again. Bottom line is there's no real way to track where your case is at this point, and so you're just in sort of a limbo while you wait for some movement on your case. A bigger issue that's come up, and one that I expect to become more prevalent with some new procedures implemented by the Department of State, is the use of a form called a DS-5535. This form was most recently updated in February of 2021 with the stated target of certain immigrant and non-immigrant visa applicants worldwide who have been determined to warrant additional scrutiny in connection with terrorism, national security related, or other visa ineligibilities. When somebody's issued a request for a DS-5535, they'll be asked to provide 15 years of travel history, address history, employment history, all their passports, and the names and dates of birth for all of their family members. This information then gets passed through a multitude of U.S. agencies to see if the person should be found ineligible for the visa that they applied for. Now, with such serious criteria for an individual to be flagged for a DS-5535, it does make sense that there would be some more intensive vetting process like this. The problem is that we've seen these be issued for people who we have no reason to believe there are any issues whatsoever in their case. It sometimes appears that these are issued arbitrarily and not necessarily when somebody's been flagged as a major security threat or something similar. In fact, sometimes individuals are able to continue traveling to the U.S. on visas that have already been issued while this vetting process is pending. So you can assume that there are not these major security flags on the person um, that have been found by the consulate. Well, in the end, the question is, what do I do if I have been issued a DS-5535 after my interview? What I think probably is the most effective solution is to hire an attorney to file a lawsuit against the consulate for unreasonable delay. These are sometimes called WAMs or writs of mandamus, um, and an attorney would essentially be suing the consulate, saying that they have a duty to resolve your case in a reasonable period of time, and they've failed to do so. Because of that failure, you're asking a federal judge to order the consulate to make a decision on your case. I've seen a lot of success with these uh, lawsuits, but it's important to note that um, there's no guarantee that a lawsuit will be successful. And you know, even if it is successful, it doesn't necessarily mean that your case gets approved. It just means that a decision gets made. So if there is reason for you to be ineligible for that visa, like for example, large criminal history in your past, um, you might still be denied in the end.